Okay, so thank you for waiting. Let's go. I'm Sebastian, the CTO of Yworks, and I'm responsible for the Y files releases. And today I would like to show you some of the features that the more than two dozen of Y files developers have been working on since January this year. The first general availability release is just around the corner. If you're looking for the HTML JavaScript platform, it will become available in July. Watch out for announcements on our social media channels or check your inboxes for updates if you cannot wait to try out the cool new features which I'm about to show you. There will be a QA session at the end of the presentation, so please type in your questions into the chat. We have a team that will answer some of your questions immediately or maybe via email later, so please leave your email address if your questions is not answered during the sessions and I will try to answer your questions at the end. Okay, as with each release, we have been working on all major parts of the library. This year, one focus was on a fresh new look with more styling and visualization options out of the box. And as always, of course, we also have new layout algorithms, some graph analysis improvements, and plus many more customization options for the interactive parts. Customers will be able to put some of these features into their existing applications, but parts of the new APIs will also enable you to implement completely new use cases. As in the previous years, with the ever-changing world of web application development, specifically the Wi-Fi's for HTML developers will find a number of improvements that should ease their lives as web developers working with Wi-Fi's. This will help both existing and new users just the same, of course. And as with every release, there are also many smaller features and improvements. While maybe not big enough to be featured in this session, for some of you, those features will prove even more valuable than the ones we are going to see today. And for those new to Y files, of course, there's so much more to discover that isn't specifically covered or new in this release, but it has been there for a long time already. So if you're a new Y files user, don't assume that this is all that Y files can do. We'll just be looking at the new things today. So let's start with automatic layout. All of the layouts features that will be coming to all the supported platforms of Wi-Files family. So you will be able to enjoy those new layouts and features in your web, desktop and server applications powered by Wi-Files. For 2022, we actually added two totally new layout styles. One is called Cactus Group Layout and the other is a utility layout called Compact Disk Layout. But we also made many improvements to the existing layout algorithms. The most versatile layout algorithm in Wi-Files, the hierarchic layout, learned a new feature to support tabular-like group nodes and can now integrate different other layouts for subgraphs more seamlessly into the drawing too. I'll get to this in a minute. The radial layout can now produce beautiful dendrogram visualizations and the support for layouts honoring the semantics of the nodes that we introduced last year has been added to two more layout algorithms. First, the new cactus group layout. You can probably guess where the name comes from. There was a paper that described the idea for the cactus-like visualization, but we completely re-implemented the algorithm from scratch so that it can now support directed edges and labeling. It can guarantee overlap-free node placement and many more features. This algorithm is not a good general purpose layout algorithm and should only be used for really deeply nested graphs and is mostly good for, for round uh, node and group node shapes. But as such, it is great for large graphs with a deep nesting and maybe with the nesting possibly automatically inferred through our large graph aggregation algorithms. So let's take a look at the demo. This is actually uh, the demo that we had uh, last year already. Um, and this year uh, you can you have the choice to switch between the balloon layout, which was the, the original style, and the new cactus group layout. Let's see how that looks. Uh, the cactus group um, shows deeply nested structures and the nesting is uh, highlighted by, by showing an overlap with the parent group node. So, so the, the, these are the leaf nodes in our hierarchy, in our nesting hierarchy. And by overlapping with other nodes, you see that they are contained in this node. So there's a path, basically a hierarchy nesting graph between these, those elements. The cool thing about this layout is that it's really very stable. So it uh, works perfectly well for interactive scenarios like these. So if your graph is huge and you want to iteratively 
explore and drill down into the graph, the smooth transitions are really perfect for uh, this use case. of um, The Cactus Group layout supports integrated labeling, so you can see the labeling at the ends uh, of uh, the leaf nodes. Uh, in this case, they are configured to be like ray-like, pointing away from the group nodes. And you can have the edge bundling showing both directedness of the edges and uh, the connections in between the uh, leaf nodes. So that's the Cactus Group layout. Let's take a look at the new compact disk layout. Although this is another completely new layout, it's not really a top-level layout that you can use standalone. It's, it's a utility that can be used in our layout pipelines or in custom user pipelines whenever there's a huge number of nodes that should be shown in a compact space, spe specifically when the adjacency between the nodes is not so important. For example, in the case of stars, where all the nodes have a common connecting element or they all belong to the same group node. And as you can see in the lower example, we integrated this utility layout into several of the existing other major layout algorithms, algorithms which can benefit of the compact placement of the subgraph groups. So let's take a look at the layout styles demo, specifically the compact uh, disk layout. You see, in this very simple example, um, there's no edges, but we get a very compact placement of the nodes. Not terribly interesting, um, but there's other things that are supported by this layout. So even if there's edges, um, you can you can uh, arrange them in, in, in this circular shape manner. And of course, you have the option to render them in a more compact manner, if specifically if the edges are not that important or you have an interactive use case. Uh, the layout also uh, supports uh, placing labels, and they can be placed uh, in, an, in a ray-like fashion for the leaves, or, uh, of course, also in a default horizontal or, or uh, unspecified or, or um, manner where, where the labels are just left at their original locations. So that's a very simple layout used uh, in other layouts, and we'll see it later in other layouts too. Next one is uh, hierarchic subcomponents. More than 75% of our customers use the hierarchic layout in their apps. It's because it's a super versatile layout algorithm that yields clear representations of graphs where flow and edge directions are really important. The algorithm supports a massive range of constraints and layout features already, but we found another use case for which we added integral support in this release. Whenever you want to add additional, like secondary level data in the form of a graph to the main flow, annotating elements with more elements or even smaller subgraphs um, was actually a quite common uh, request of our customers and, and quite common for their use cases. For example, in a chemical or biolog biological reaction network, there are often these reaction nodes, but the reaction also has additional inputs with ingredients and so on. Or maybe consider a, a set of tasks in a process flow diagram. There can be additional supplement, uh, supplemental hierarchies of elements attached to one or more of these main flow elements. And these special substructures can now be perfectly integrated into the main layout using a different layout style to make them easy to distinguish from the rest. So let's see that in action. So um, in this example, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, the, the orange graph in the background is, um, is rendered using the hierarchic layout. So this is, there's this hierarchy going, in this case, from the top to the bottom with the orange nodes. But there's these special components in here that are configured to be rendered in a different fashion. So uh, they are not using the same layers and the same arrangement like we have for the main layout. But uh, instead, I can, can just like create additional networks and mar mark these elements and specify them in code, of course, um, um, that I want them to be rendered in a hierarchical style. In this case, maybe from the right to the left, and then it will be rendered like this. So we have the main flow going from the top to the bottom and the additional elements rendered in a hierarchical style from left to right. Of course, this could also be, for example, a tree layout. Uh, let's put it on the other side. Let's say I want this to be a tree layout. It should be rendered from left to right, 
forest at this very specific um, location and then we get the tree visualization right in here so uh, if there is more elements like this um, it's just so that you see that this is a tree um, um, and this should be marked as tree of course um, so like this hmm. yeah it's all life um, um, you get the idea so you get you get this tree like structure just right here integrated into the main diagram this also works for for other styles like the organic layout style but perfect but is really well suited for this smaller graphs where you have these small hierarchies or additional elements added um, to uh, to the to to specific subset of the nodes so that's the hierarchic uh, subcomponents feature Another feature that we had uh, support for in the hierarchic layout was nested groups. Many of our customers used this in the past to model table-like structures, so inside the group nodes, basically to design a compound node with the help of nested groups. While this was feasible, it did require many tweaks to the core algorithm and still sometimes didn't lead to optimal results because the algorithm wasn't really aware of what the users wanted. So. With this release, we added this as a core capability to the layout algorithm. So if you want to uh, nodes with, with nested rows or columns inside them that are used as connection points and not just for the visualization, not just tables, but really some things that you can connect to, like in these examples, it's now super easy to configure the layout to produce perfect results for this use case. So let's take a look at the tabular groups demo. Uh, without that feature, basically, uh, you can see that the graph is just a, a hierarchically nested graph where the, the gray nodes are regular nodes and the blue nodes are group nodes. Uh, but um, the algorithm typically tries to minimize the number of bends and crossings, and this can lead to, to larger group nodes, like in this case. So if you want a compact table uh, visualization, you can now use the table or groups feature, and they will be rendered like this. Of course, you can still do things like configure the distance between the elements. And if you don't want the algorithm to optimize the order of the elements in order to reduce the number of crossings and bends, uh, you can actually specify uh, a custom sorting. So if you want them to be, in this case, in ascending order, ascending order um, um, and you're okay with uh, getting some op optionally some, some, some crossings, uh, you can enable um, a, a sorting order for the elements. This is great for example for drawing uh, database diagrams where this is really a typical use case um, or even UML diagrams where you can have multiple nesting levels. So this doesn't work just on the top level but uh, let's just disable this. Also when there is a group with another group inside them and then elements inside it um, you can have this as a two custom compartments and the the algorithm will optimize them or sort them according to your uh, specification. Next type is a node type support for balloon and compact disks. So last year we introduced the ability for many of the layouts to take into account the, the semantics of the nodes, meaning that when nodes have a semantic meaning or type, this can be considered for the layout and then optimized appropriately. Many of our users have been adopting these new features for their, uh, for their apps, so we added it to two more layouts. Now both the existing balloon layout uh, for tree-like structures and the new compact disk layout support node types too. And it's actually quite easy to configure as this uh, code snippet for JavaScript shows here below. Um, it's up to you um, how you define the type of a node, what's the semantics. So in this demo, it's just the color, but it could be anything. It, it wouldn't ha doesn't even have to be something that's visible in the diagram, but it could be bound to the additional data. As you can see, we have this feature already for uh, um, other styles. Uh, this, is, uh, this isn't new, but what's new is that we also have this for the balloon layout, for example. So um, in case you have a structure like this, where there's uh, different types of nodes, uh, you might want um, them to be uh, closer together so that it's easier for the user to see um, how many of the, the how many elements of the different types you have in your diagram. So for the balloon balloon layout, you can now turn this on, and then they will be sorted accordingly 
uh, unless there is uh, uh, other constraints that uh, don't allow uh, changing of the order. So this is a secondary, uh, uh, second level uh, optimization. And uh, if there's other optimization criteria, uh, they will be honored first. Also for the compact disk layout, it's pretty obvious that uh, a visualization at th that like this doesn't only look uh, less nice, but also it's less clear to the user how many uh, different types there are in, in this diagram with this new feature turned on. Of course, you can easily see that there's three different types of nodes in this diagram. Very simple but effective technique. Uh, last but not least, least the, the dendrogram layout. Uh, the dendrogram mode is a special purpose layout um, which has uh, specifically been created for the radial layout. Uh, in this case, um, leaf nodes uh, are always placed at the outermost ring. So even if they are at a different hierarchy level, they will always be pulled down to the lowermost level. Uh, this is known as a dendrogram. And we improved um, the, the routing and the automatic placement of the nodes, as well as the labels for, for this use case of the hierarchic layout. So it's great for interactivity if you, and if you want to compare um, uh, deep hierarchies of elements like in this case um, life on earth and uh, things like different fungi and so on. So the next topic is about graph algorithms. There haven't been many new algorithms in this release as our set of algorithms is pretty big already. But let's look at two of the new algorithms. Um, a tool that we have been using mostly internally so far in our graph layout algorithms is the so-called simplex rank assignment algorithm. Um, and with this release, we added it as a convenient API for our customers to use. Uh, the results of running this algorithm can be used to, for example, drive the visualization or configure other layouts, like in, in this example we have here at the top, um, where we show how to calculate a critical path and then render it highlighting the critical edges and those that maybe still have slack. So, so this demo is available online, but it focuses on the source code rather than on the interactivity. So I won't uh, go into the details. Just know that you have this as another tool in your toolbox uh, of your graph algorithms. Uh, the next algorithm is something about intersections. Customers have an often, often asked us how to efficiently detect intersecting and overlapping elements in a drawing that often was created interactively by users before. So with this release, uh, there comes a simple API that can be used for exactly this task, um, finding intersections and overlaps between elements in the graph. This information comes in handy when you need to configure an automatic layout in order to get rid of overlaps and improve the drawing generated by the user maybe without changing it too much, without applying a new layout from scratch. So rather you can configure an automatic edge router, for example, to only reroute those edges that intersect massively with other important nodes, uh, just like you want. Or, or you can use it to highlight overlaps in the drawing for the user. So rather than solving the problem, you just highlight the problems or issue a warning so that the user can interactively resolve the conflicts. Let's see that in, in action. So this is a very quick algorithm and, and it runs, it, it, it can be run interactively, like, like in this case, where we highlight all those intersecting elements, like there's node to node intersections or labels overlapping, or maybe edge segments overlapping each other, or even just crossings. So, so when there's crossings, so um, you could use this for example, in the interactive mode to maybe prevent the user from dragging an element to these places where there's too many overlaps or just highlight them for the user so that they will be able to resolve um, uh, the conflicts um, manually. So um, this is just a demo showing the algorithm for the, the actual use case. You'll, you'll probably want to implement this differently. This is just showing what the algorithm can do and uh, showing its performance. Um, so far we have seen the algorithm parts of the library, but of course Wi-Files is a library 
for visualizing graphs, so visually styling the elements is an important bit. Um, with this release, we added more styling options out of the box. While not all of, while not all of them were difficult to implement for customers previously themselves, it still saves them a lot of work when we provide them as part of the library, of course. And specifically for this release, we concentrated on adding more shape variations for nodes and labels and label backgrounds, and even for edges. So uh, we also added a new highly configurable group node visualization and added the ability to do text wrapping within complex shapes so that the text lines do not overspill uh, out of the visual boundaries of the node. So let's see some demos. We start with a simple one um, with the default shape node styles that we have. So there is a little new in here. We have this new pill node style, very nice uh, visualization. I like that very much. And um, you can also see in this uh, demo that if the actual node uh, layout, the geometry of the node uh, doesn't fit the aspect ratio of the, the shape, the intrinsic one, then they may appear stretched and we have this new option to always keep the aspect ratio um, to the intrinsic one of the shape. So uh, you can dis enable this and don't uh, need the user to, um, uh, don't require the user to, to keep the aspect ratio manually or via keyboard shortcuts and etc. So this is a very simple uh, new style implementation that we have. Another si simple one is the rectangle node style, which uh, sounds boring and isn't that uh, that exciting either. But it's really versatile. Basically, it starts with with a with a plain rectangular shape, and what you can do is you can specify which corners of the shape you want to be either rounded or cut, and whether you want to do this. Uh, in absolute or relative uh, values. So if you resize and notice that the, the, the rounding stays the same or grows accordingly. And you can specify which parts of these um, uh, corners you want to uh, crop and you can create really like fancy shapes with this technique if you want to. So that's the rectangle node style, another small utility style. Next one, as promised, is the group node style. So this is um, a node style that you can use to group, to hierarchically nest other uh, nodes inside a node. Um, you can, while you can use any uh, of the existing styles or create your own one, this one uh, was specifically built to um, uh, make it easy to interact with um, the, the, the group nodes so that you interactively expand and collapse um, these nodes. So you can specify colors and uh, roundness and different shapes of the, the these tabs, whether you want to have a drop shadow, the types of icons you want to use, and there's animations and all and all that stuff. So it's very versatile style, lots and lots of configuration options, and we we are using it throughout the new demos. Uh, so it's almost always the same style, just with different configurations, and we hope you will be able to use it in your programs just the same. Um, next one is an arrow node style. Um, so while arrow does sound more like an edge, it can also be used as a shape, as a node style. So, so these are actually nodes and I can connect them with other edges if I want to. So, those, so this is a node and the arrow node style um, does what its name says. It, it renders an arrow where you can specify like things like the, the angle of the tip and the thickness of the, the shaft and um, the direction, of course, where the arrow points to and what, what kind of basic shape you want with, with one or two sided or notched and, and so on. So a utility style that you can use for certain types of diagrams where uh, you should, will probably use them sparingly just, to, just in some, for some special purposes. But if you have these, of course, uh, having an arrow edge style uh, it was rather trivial for us, so we implement this too, and it's probably the more useful style. So for, for edges, you can now um, uh, use these arrows, these thick arrows, and they, you can have the same configuration options, determine the angles and the thickness and the, the of the shaft and so on, and uh, how long you want to uh, um, crop the, the ends of the edges around 
um, the nodes. So that's the new arrow edge style. Last but not least, label text wrapping. So when you have all these fancy new shapes and you want to render uh, labels on top of them, of course, uh, you probably don't want uh, the labels to spill over the bounds of the labels. So we came up with a te text wrapping implementation that understands these these uh, these shapes, and you can configure them to uh, to be cropped uh, using these shape information. You can specify insets and how you want the words to be wrapped in a, uh, by on a word uh, level or on a character level or with ellipses or without and so on. So for all these shapes, um, you can now render text inside these shapes without uh, spinning over the boundaries. And you can also use this uh, um, utility in your own custom shapes. Um, so it's not limited to the shapes that we provide out of the box. So next up is interaction. So the focus for the interaction with the graphs and diagrams in this release was on offering a new and easy way to create your own custom theme, matching your corporate identity and, and colors. So we decided to add a set of lighter themes that look really slick with reduced color themes. So they may not work as well for generic diagrams where you have infinitely number of colors, but with diagrams with a fixed set of a few colors, where you can come up with a nice contrasting unique color for the UI elements, the new theme looks more modern to us at least. So also since many of our customers are using the scroll bar mostly as an indicator to see where they are in the diagram, we added an option to use a less intrusive, less visible scroll bar that actually overlays the canvas but only becomes visible when the user hovers near the borders of the canvas or when the viewport has just been moved iOS users may use may know this kind of um, scroll bar from their devices already, so it looks pretty much like the iOS uh, scroll bar. Um, you might have noticed them already in the demos I was showing, and you will see them in the coming demos too, since we enabled this for many of the demos. The old ones are still there, of course. And for use with touch interfaces, in those situations where actually editing the graph is more important than browsing the graph, we made it simple to configure two finger panning so that all single finger interactions basically map directly to mouse dragging operations. But panning is done with two fingers. Um, we feel this is much more intuitive than the current default, um, which basically changed in the last uh, uh, decade uh, with, with tools like Google Maps and so setting a new standard. So at least for the editing scenario, we think that the new uh, um, variant is much more convenient but still both variants are still there and we didn't change them incompatibly, but you will have to set the new uh, values. Um, here's a quick demo showing uh, the new theming options and, and what they could look like. So um, there's um, specifically the, the different, uh, the indicators for, for the node selection, for the, for the handles, for the edge selection. Um, this is our traditional, uh, scheme which works really nice with with generic graphs but is a bit boring it looks a bit too technical and um, with the new scaling option specifically which you can use for for touch devices you can uh, use uh, you can easily with just like five lines of code change uh, the configuration of of the styling to one of the other uh, styles and use CSS to get animations and stuff like that in, uh, into um, the realization for these um, selection indicators and so on. So there's different styling options for you uh, for the theming. So last but not least, let's look at what will be new in the upcoming coming release specifically for Wi files for HTML. Because last year we introduced the new WebGL based rendering engine specifically for the large graph visualizations and the explorative use cases. Since implementing WebGPL GPU shader programs is all but trivial, but it really makes it possible to render millions of elements with extremely high, fra high frame rates. Um, this comes at the cost of customability. Sorry, <laughs> this comes at the cost of customizability. And thus our customers depend on what we provide out of the box here. So 
this release adds a lot of additional flexibility and style implementations to their toolbox. Um, you've already seen the new group node style, which is also available as a WebGL rendered style with all its customization options. But we also added more shapes and stroking and dashing options, more effects and animations, as well as the ability to style the selection, the focus indicators and the highlights with a completely new set of configuration options specifically for WebGL. But we also worked on the visual fidelity and improved the rendering of smooth bands, arcs, icons and text. But let's just have a look at some of these. So this is basically the old WebGL styles demo, but it's using the new um, group node style over here. So this is WebGL, uh, so this is interactive. You can expand and collapse them. These are uh, the nodes with a few new, new shapes and a few new effects. And we have these perfectly rounded uh, arc uh, um, edges over here. Um, which previously didn't look as nice. And we can now uh, enable things like smooth bends uh, for polyline edges so that they get really um, nice stroking. Let's wait for the program to compile because Zoom is taking all my power. So, okay. Um, so this is uh, smoothed um, bends and you can specify the, the smoothing factor and of course things like thickness and and Dashing is also supported. So let's make this dotted and over here. So this there's dotted edges now. You can e even add effects to edges like 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 a drop shadow and and also uh, for uh, I should have selected it first like a drop shadow or even things like like um, like a glow. Um, let's try this up here. Um, so um, this is just a gray glow, but you can animate that glow, uh, uh, change the size of the glow and use that for highlighting purposes and so on. Uh, also in this visualization, you see that we, you might have seen that we improved the text rendering. So text rendering is, is quite difficult in WebGL, um, but with the new text re rendering engine that we have, it's now easy to um, to get crisp visualizations even once you zoom in. So this is using a technique known as sign distance function. So even if you zoom in, uh, texts don't get blurry. Um, you probably won't, don't want your users to zoom that far in, but uh, knowing that they can and they won't get to see a blurry text is a good thing. Let's take a look at the um, animations that we have, some of the animations that we uh, rebuilt for this uh, release. We not only added new animations, but we also uh, improved the way they work and how they can be configured. So um, let's try it with a simple scaling animation. So while I hover over, over an element, it, it scales. But previously, when I, when I uh, left the mouse, it just snapped back to the original um, state. Now you can like uh, uh, smoothly revert to the previous state and and specify easing functions and durations and so on. So that's actually pretty versatile and you can do crazy stuff with it. So like let's do five uh, iterations alternating uh, with some, I don't know, with some easing and then it will do this five times. Let's do it a, bit, a little bit quicker. And you can use this to create all kinds of different effects. Um, we also have some new effects. Uh, one of my favorite one is probably the beacon effect, which you can use to highlight elements. So if, if you're zoomed out and you have a large graph and you want uh, the user to, to, to put attention to a certain set of elements, you can use the beacon effect um, to attract their attention. Let's do this uh, in a zoom invariant style. So even if you're zoomed out, you're going to see this. Um, and this is like, uh, like echoing waves. Um, running away from the elements. And this doesn't only work for for nodes, but also for edges and, and not only for uh, elliptical, uh, for yeah circular or elliptical edges, but also for more complex shapes, which looks really nice. Let's do this with a larger pulse, uh, just uh, far, further away, just two ones and yeah, really big ones. So, and 
how you get these effects. I, I could watch this forever, I think. Uh, <laughs> another nice uh, animation is the Halo one, which uh, renders a static Halo around the nodes. Also nice for uh, um, highlighting s different sets of elements in, in the graph. So you can have m different halos uh, at the same time for for various nodes in the graph so, or, or, or edges. So they don't have to be the same time. And of course, it's not just about hovering, but you have full control over when those um, um, indicators appear um, to the users. So, so much about the animations. Um, last but not least, I told you that we also uh, optimize the selection and highlighting. And uh, this is also specifically for, for WebGL. There's new options. So if you select edges and labels, um, you somehow want them to be uh, to indicate the selection. In this case, it's an orange line. Um, but we have lots and lots of different patterns like uh, dashing or dotted patterns. So I can change the colors and make this look really ugly. And, and um, I can also uh, do things like animate those um, so that there's marching ants animations. I hope you can see this uh, via the zoom technology here. Um, but yeah, you can use this for both for selection um, as well as for, for highlighting elements or for the focus indicator if you use the keyboard to navigate uh, the graph. And you can use different styles for these. And as you, as, as, as you may have noticed, there's also the option to, to transition uh, the, 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 the state change of the selectedness. So if you select elements, they can either uh, appear selected right immediately, or there's a smooth transition so that they fade in and fade out. Lots of eye candy here that we have for the new WebGL uh, highlighting and styling. So YFiles is a programming lab library with a huge and really powerful API. So naturally, we're always working on improving the developer experience to make it easier for the devs to actually use the full potential of the API. Uh, in the past, there were two major IDEs that required different formats for the inline code completion to work best. And so with dev teams using both IDEs, they had to choose which variant of the NPM bundle they were using in their app during development. But with recent improvements uh, in both of these IDEs, we were now able to change the documentation file format so that, so that it works great in both IDEs. And this also enabled us to finally make the move and include Wi-Files as a local NPM package right out of, out of the box. So just NPM install the package and it will work with all good IDEs out there. So of course, we also checked and confirmed that Wi-Files works flawlessly with the recent browsers and major new frameworks and tool chains. There's a whole lot of smaller improvements, which I can't be listing today, but you'll find them in the changelog and hopefully as a developer, you will get to enjoy them as soon as you start working with a new release in a few weeks. The new demos are already online, as you may have seen. So check them out, share them with your friends and colleagues and do give us your feedback. Okay, but now for your questions, let's see what we have there. So there's one question. I wonder if you have any example how to drag and drop sticky mode node to edge and create a new node with two edges from one edge before. Ooh. Um, uh, draw, drag and drop a node to an edge and create a new node with two edges. Ah, okay, so splitting an, an edge. We, we don't have such an example um, in our demos, but it's really not difficult to implement. And I know that uh, customers have been doing this before. Um, since the API provides this information about um, the items uh, at the drop location, Splitting elements uh, is just easy, uh, just as easy as uh, creating a new one and, and replacing the old one, or re creating tr two new ones and replacing the old one. Um, you can replace the existing edge with two new edges, and that then include the dropped node. Um, uh, this isn't specifically about the new features, uh, so uh, if you need more details, please contact our support team, and we'll get back to you immediately. 
Um, there's one question, what would, be the, what would be the maximum number of nodes and edges for cactus? Well, there's no fixed restrictions on the number of elements as with basically with none of our, our algorithms. While the algorithm is usually quite fast actually, um, even for, for larger graphs, so meaning way more than a thousand nodes, the, the required space may somehow limit its applicability then because it, uh, depending on the structure of the graph, it could grow rather, rather quickly. Um, so you probably um, uh, need to use this in an interactive scenario where we can zoom in. Um, but uh, well, well, well performance-wise, uh, quite quite a, a large number of nodes should should work well for them. Um, but we are, we're really excited to see what you will be building. So uh, we are, we're really looking for your feedback and uh, if there's room for improvements, well, there's always another release after this release. <laughs> um, any plans to stop obfuscating non-critical parts of the source code to ease debugging? <laughs> um, this 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 uh, this minification is is there for several reasons. It's for for it's it's there for licensing reasons, but also um, for performance reasons. Um, we we do have this uh, these versions where you can get the uh, unminified uh, versions of WiFast too. Uh, so so that's that's an option, of course. Um, we pro uh, we might want to change this for certain parts. So if if there's there's certain parts that often need to be like debugged by our by our customers because they 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 get exceptions there. Um, then uh, we're we're always eager to to try to improve uh, the exception messages and of course try to improve the code so that debugging isn't really necessary. So um, if there's a concrete thing that you have, please do get back to us and and we'll um, and. Be, and we'll try to incorporate your feedback in the next release. What was the most difficult thing to implement for this release? I guess it. I I think it was definitely the GPU shaders. Um, that they they are truly complex and uh, and while while the web has become tremendously cross compatible in the recent years, maybe with the exception of Safari and of course Internet Explorer. Um, WebGL compatibility and drivers um, is not that great yet. So we have seen seen bugs with which had to do with certain hardware software combinations, and and sometimes it's it's the GPU driver. So we we really love to hear your feedback. So when when something doesn't perform great, it's likely a hardware software or driver issue. Um, so please tell us about it so that we can then investigate and improve this the situation or contact the browser vendors to uh well do their work and improve and get get those bugs fixed um will you still be supporting internet explorer with wi files for html uh so yes wi files is still compatible and the new release is still compatible compatible with internet explorer um and while not all of the demos uh, run in IE9, most of them should actually, uh, apart from the features that really the platform doesn't support like WebGL or or um, web threads like, like web workers, um, we will continue to support uh, IE, but we will, be, we will be using more modern browser features in the future and when specifically when this can help to uh, the, the performance of the library. Um, even if this means I, that we get a slowdown in IE because IE users probably don't care much about performance anyway. So, uh, but those users who do on the more modern, on the evergreen browsers, they should benefit from from uh, the newer code in the future. Um, so, in the, it's, since a couple of releases, we have been optimizing mostly uh, for the new browsers and making sure that it still works in the older ones, but uh, haven't optimizing for for the older ones. Um, will the Jupyter plugin also use the new features? <laughs> so the, this is about our uh, Jupyter graph plugin, visualization plugin, the free one. And 
well, there are some features in the new in the new release that well probably would work well in 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 the in the plugin. So we're we're going to consider this for inclusion. Um, so as always, your feedback is is our input. So spread the word about that plugin, and and uh, the more people are using it, and the more people and the more uh, people give us feedback, or the the more feedback that we get. Um, the more features we will be adding to it in the end. And probably things like the WebGL uh, selection and highlight animations and and maybe some of, some of the new layout features uh, will be added to the plugin in any case. Um, uh, are all features shown already in available in the HTML version? The one that I just showed you, the features um, have not been released, so um, the, the demos are online, but these uh, you you can't uh, yet evaluate the new files. As I said, this will be uh, they will become available uh, for you to evaluate or uh, integrate into your applications in July, probably uh, third or fourth fourth week of July. And one more question, and then I think we'll call it a day. Uh, let's see which one. Um, does WebGL rendering support HTML-based nodes? Um, yes and no. Um, WebGL rendering means uh, that uh, the the visualization is processed by through shaders, and it's basically pixel-based. And uh, since there is no um, good way to render HTML or cross-platform way to render HTML, HTML code into a bitmap in, inside the browser, um, it's not as easy. But if uh, there, are, there are tools out there, open source tools and, and maybe even some commercial ones, um, where you can render HTML into bitmaps and then you can use those bitmaps to render them into uh, the WebGL. But the, the WebGL use case is mostly for the large graph uh, visualizations with the explorative use cases where I don't think that uh, having complex HTML rendered um, node visualizations is a good fit. So this is then then the, the performance of, S, of the SVG, SVG rendering pipeline is really good uh, uh, as long as you don't have tens of tens of thousands of elements on the screen. So, um, so in this case you can use uh, HTML based visuals um, at least if you don't have to support uh, IE9. Um, but ideally, try to use SVG, which is the best cross-platform uh, compatible rendering. And there's, for the majority of use cases that we have seen in the past, coming up with a pure SVG-based um, visualization is best. It's, it's, it gives you the best uh, developer productivity, the best tooling, very good performance, and, and also integrates well with designer tools, so they can probably export directly to SVG if they're using things like these Adobe tools. Okay, um, if I see there's a couple more questions in there, um, we will get back to you if you uh, leave your email address. And in case we don't, uh, for some reason, or in case uh, you forgot to add your email address, please uh, use our contact forms on our website or use the uh, support center to ask your questions and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for uh, listening. Now you know what's new in the 2022 releases. Thank you for attending the webinar and have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye.